Hi guys, welcome back to Will the Beard Reviews, and welcome back to What's on Your Polis, the weekly show where we talk about our favorite day of the week, New Comic Book Day. Now, before we get into y'all's comments from last week and the co- and the comics that I'm buying this week, I do want to tell you that I will be going out of town on Thursday this week, so I will be in town for Wednesday and be able to pick up my comics and start reviewing them on Wednesday, but I won't be able to finish until Sunday, probably Monday, probably be tired uh, from my trip. I do have seven comics coming out this week hopefully i can get three maybe four of them done wednesday night before i leave i'll probably pick the most topical or the biggest comics that are coming out this week and we do have some big ones coming out this week so without further ado uh let's get into y'all's comments from last week because there's some great stuff to talk about there first off we've got ricky bobby this week i have batman 74 detective comics 107 young justice 7 and miles morales 8 i really love the first half of tom king's run but have not been a fan of the past few arcs i'm hoping he can finish off his run in a satisfying way you and me both now i've been enjoying tom king's run pretty consistently um i didn't jump into reading monthly batman until about into the 40s i believe is when i started reading uh batman monthly so i read that whole first like 40 or so issues just real quick i just binged them and ever since then i've been uh reading them month to month or week to week i have been enjoying the past couple uh story arcs i think the nightmare story arc is going to wear on a lot of people. I enjoyed it. I had my reasons for enjoying it. This last one, though, The Fall and the Fallen, ended really strong. And this week we got 75 coming up. It's going to be the first one we talk about here in a minute. So, yes. Uh, just like you, I hope Tom King can finish this out. This is the final act. City of Bane is the big thing they've been driving to, but we'll save most of our conversation for that for here in a minute. All right, next up, we've got I Love Signed Comics says, This week I have Flash 74, Wonder Woman 74, and Hawkman 14. The year, of the, the year of the Villain event kicking in. Also, I after hearing some talk, I added Reaver to my list. Going to give this one a go. Hopefully it is as interesting as the premise sounds on paper. Ciao. Now, Reaver, it does sound like a very interesting book. I believe it's an image book. Um, it's kind of like a Suicide Squad, but with different characters and things like that, but kind of that same general conceit. Now, this isn't something that I've really announced publicly on the channel, but... I have started uh, writing for a website called Sequential Planet. I'll drop their link in the description down below. So uh, I didn't get a chance to pick up a physical copy of Reaver, but I do believe we have a press copy that I can get my hands on. I probably won't review it here on the channel. Let me talk about it real quick uh, next week, but I am going to check that one out based on a lot of people's recommendations. I heard it was a decent book. Uh, all right, then we got Comic Kid 17. This week I have Silver Surfer Black, number two, Miles Morales, Spider Man 8, and and possibly Invisible Woman number one. Also, I hope they don't change Tim to Flamebird with the Kryptonian story of Nightwing and Flamebird. Flamebird is the Robin, the sidekick of the pair. I think a detective theme name would work best, given that he is also the smartest Robin. So, uh, what he's talking about is last week, the uh, Young Justice 7, the summary of it, or actually uh, two weeks ago, sorry, the, um, the summary for Young Justice 7 teased that we were getting a new uh, hero name uh, for Tim Drake, Red Robin, or Robin, and that didn't happen, actually, in this issue. I was very irked about it. Uh, I believe it might be happening in issue 10 now. I've seen some drawings for uh, that cover, some unfinished artwork that shows Tim in a new costume, so that would seem to coincide. So 8, 9, or 10, it's, it's coming in the next couple months. I was very irked that it was announced that it was coming out in that particular issue based on DC's public release about that issue, but sadly it wasn't, so we'll have to uh, wait for that. Alright guys, let's go and talk about the comics that are on my list this week, and like I said, seven comics, big, big week. First off, we've got Batman 75, Firefly 8, Justice League 28, Teen Titans 32, Uncanny X-Men 22, Usagi Yojimbo 2, and X-Force 10. Stacked, stacked week. And let's talk about the big one, the, the big man, you see him there on the cover, all roided out, venomed out with all the ancillary villains behind him. Let's talk about Batman 75. City of Bane begins. Bane's minions have moved into Gotham City, taking control and are ruling with an iron fist, including rounding up any villain who refuses to sign onto Bane's program. And Batman is nowhere to be found. At least not the Batman anyone knows. It's like someone has replaced the real Gotham City with a twisted funhouse mirror version of it. Meanwhile, the real Bruce Wayne is on a spiritual quest to regain his fighting spirit after 
Emperor's showdown with his father in the desert. Can the people of Gotham hold on until their protector is strong enough to come to their rescue? Plus, what does Lex Luthor's scheming mean for Gotham City when Bane and the villains are already in control? This extra-sized anniversary issue kicks off a new multi-part storyline that ties together all of the threads of the first 74 issues of Tom King's epic Batman run. That was a wall of text, guys. I'm, thank you for sitting through that. So I am super, super excited about this. This will, I will review this one Wednesday when it comes in. Probably also with Uncanny X-Men and uh, X-Force 10. Those are the ones uh, I'm most looking forward to this week. But this one, this is the number one comic on my list this week. I'm not talking about it uh, first just because it's alphabetically first. This is the one I am most excited about. Like I said earlier, I have been really enjoying Tom King's run, run ever since the beginning. And this is the, the pin ultimate story. Like this is where everything has been leading to. Now, it said in the description there, let's go back to it, that um, at uh, Batman is nowhere to be found, at least not the Batman anyone knows. So in the previous story arc, The Fall and The Fallen, Bruce Wayne Batman and Thomas Wayne, the Flashpoint Batman, went out into the desert and they had a big fight in this pit. It uh, was kind of like a Lazarus pit, but not quite. It was kind of a twist on the Lazarus pit. And Batman uh, went there with him to... Uh, with. Bruce went there with Thomas, I'm going to get my Batmans confused, sorry about that, to uh, try to, bre to beat Thomas Wayne Batman to leave him there. And we saw someone coming up out of the pit. Based on this summary, it sounds like Thomas Wayne was the one that won in that pit. And he was the one that got out of the pit and came back to Gotham and is being the, the Batman of Gotham. And our regular Batman, Bruce Wayne, is... You know, like it says, going on a, a spiritual quest to regain his fighting spirit. And I believe this is also where Catwoman, I hope, where Catwoman rolls back into the story and we get her back in here. Her standalone series has not been great. It's just almost like that character's been treading water a little bit. So I definitely want, for that character's sake, her to come back to Batman, the main series, and pick up kind of where she left off when she noped out back at issue 25. So guys... I believe this is an eight-part story arc uh, to take us through the end of the year or thereabouts. I can't wait for it. It's going to be an amazing time. Hopefully, this uh, all the work that's been done leading up to this pays off, and this is as good as we all hope that it is. All right, next up on my list is Firefly number eight. Look at that cover. So awesome. They've had some really great covers. Mal and Zoe versus Boss Moon, and there's no one leaving without paying the price. But when the dust settles, will these bitter enemies discover an even greater threat? So Boss Moon, who is Boss Moon? If you haven't been following Firefly, she is a character who was on the other side of the war during the... Uh, uh, War of Unification, right, where the brown coats fought the Alliance, all that kind of stuff, and she witnessed Mal and Zoe blow up a field hospital, and she has been out for revenge trying to capture Mal and take him in. Now, there's been all kinds of shenanigans, very Firefly-esque style shenanigans, where Mal and Boss Moon have ended up on a planet together and have had to basically team up, and through that, they've found some common ground with each other, and it's been some amazing writing. Now, What's Zoe been doing? Zoe's been, um, you know, helping all of that along the way, um, just, you know, before Mal and Boss Moon ran off. And then she was going to try, their, the crew was going to go try to find Mal when she stumbles into a bar and there's a bunch of brown coats in there and they say, hey, we're with you. And she's like, all right, let's saddle up and go get Mal. Meanwhile, the rest of the crew is doing stuff that is purely in line with what the rest of the crew would be doing. I'm excited about this. This has been a great story. It's actually gone on longer uh, than I thought it would. Eight issues, I figured it would probably end about six, but this thing just keeps chugging and going and going. If you're not reading Firefly, I highly, highly recommend it. This story arc has been great, and it's still a pretty young series. Still plenty of opportunity for you guys to jump on. All right, next up on my list is Justice League 28. Let's read the description here. The Apex Predator rises. Justice Doom War is coming. This is the culmination of the Le Legion of Doom's master plan, and they will take the Justice League to far out places they may never return from and do things the DC Universe may never recover from. I find that last little bit hard to believe. It's few and far between that some of these big events actually have lasting impact on it. Like your Crisis on Infinite Earths, your New 52, stuff like that. Yeah, but those are, are few and far between. 
That aside, I'm really, really enjoying Justice League. Uh, as you can see there, Lex Luthor, I believe, has merged himself with some Martian DNA. Part of the story that's been going on in Justice League is uh, about Perpetua and an army that she raised in Perpetua is an ancient uh, being. She was uh, part of the, the group of beings that helped shape the multiverse. She's the mother to the Monitor and the Anti-Monitor from Crisis on Infinite Earths and also the mother to the World Forger who was the brother to the Monitor and the Anti-Monitor and she is trying to push the universe towards Doom and the Legion of Doom is helping her do that. Now like I said she had an army that was all of the best pieces of mankind and Martians and in the Year of the Villain DC special that came out a few months ago, I had a bunch of small stories that kind of led into Year of the Villain. Um, Lex Luthor killed himself, but was then reborn as one of those uh, members of her army. Looking like this, you can kind of see the white Martianess, and he's fighting there with uh, Martian Manhunter, the last uh, green Martian, except uh, Miss Martian, who's still floating around the universe somewhere. Um, so this has been a Fantastic. You can see uh, the offer banner up there at the top. Last week, I believe, was the first week where we started seeing Lex giving offers to a lot of characters in the DC Universe. I know personally I had it in Red Hood and Catwoman, and there is one in um, Batman and the Outsiders. I'm sure there's others, but those are just the ones that I read, and a lot of these offers are very, very intriguing. I can't wait to get into this and see what else we got going on. All right, next up on my list is Teen Titans. 32 featuring Lobo as you can see there on the cover Lobo's back and he's got his daughter crush dead to rights at least she can ask him about the identity of her mother right and as the Teen Titans square off against the main man an enemy more sadistic than any they've ever faced before questions about the team's future are still hanging in the balance that is if they have any future at all Plus, Lobo wants a daughter he can be proud of. Crush wants nothing to do with her father, and Lex Luthor is about to ruin Crush's life. So, we get something to do with Lex Luthor in here. Again, you can see uh, that uh, the offer banner there at the top. Last issue, uh, actually two issues ago, Lobo showed up at the very end, and then last issue was basically just a huge fight between the Teen Titans, mainly Crush, and Lobo, and it was a pretty good issue, although it was mainly just action. Hopefully, this issue we do get... A little bit more um, story because like the description said we don't know who Crush's mother is we know for sure that she's Lobo's daughter I mean just look at the two characters on the cover there very clearly father and daughter going on there and we had I believe it was issue 25 uh, in this series that gave us the story of uh, Lo uh, Crush falling to Earth. It was very much a Superman story kind of twisted on its head she fell to Earth she was wrapped in some sentient chains and got picked up by a couple that weren't exactly Ma and Pa Kent uh, from Smallville, Kansas. They were drug addicts and they were knocked over liquor stores and that kind of stuff. So that kind of imparts on her character. But we don't know how or why she fell to Earth like that or who her mother is. So I'm really hoping that this issue finally gives us some of those answers about her character. And if that summary is to be believed, which is sometimes suspect as we talked about at the top with Young Justice Number 7... Uh, that may not always be the case, so we'll see what comes out of uh, Teen Titans issue 32. All right, next up is Uncanny X-Men 22, the last, last issue in this current Uncanny X-Men run, giving way to Jonathan Hickman's uh, House of X and Power of Ten, which I cannot wait for. Let's read the description here. It all ends here. This is forever. As Cyclops' cleanup mission nears its close, all the problems the X-Men face come together. The, true, the truth behind the Hellfire Club's intentions, the culmination of the one's assault on mutant kind, and even the inner struggles within the team, it all ends here. This is forever. So, last issue, Emma Frost did something insane. It looked like she had a, like, a side of her head shaved and someone had done some surgery on her, kind of presumably amped up her powers, and that combined with Cerebro, she erased the knowledge of mutants from the entire world, presumably just the humans, but boom. No one, no one remembers mutants anymore. Like the the X Men were in a fight with uh, the Office of National Emergency, the soldiers you see here on the cover, and they just stopped. They you know helped the X Men up off the ground. It's like, hey man, you okay? And Emma's like, yeah, I zapped uh, the the knowledge of mutant kind 
out of their heads. So there's got to be some kind of massive fallout from that. And from the summary, it sounds like there's much more revelations to be had here. We've been slowly peeling back the onion from things that have been that have been going on since issue 11, right after the uh, disassembled story arc where X-Men did his X-Men thing and started the Age of X-Men stuff, which I haven't really been reading. Um, but I'm excited for this. I'm sad to see this series go because it's been a great series. But I'm damn excited to see what Jonathan Hickman is going to bring to the table. All right, next up on my list is Usagi Yojimbo number two. Now, this will be only the second issue of Usagi Yojimbo that I have ever read. Last issue being the first, and I really enjoyed it. It's a character that I've wanted to get to know. Uh, I even got a little uh, Usagi Yojimbo character uh, here on my action figure here on my desk. It's from the uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles line from the CGI TV show that started in 2012. Uh, I I believe um so i've been wanting to get into this character and since he started a new series over at idw i figured it was a perfect time to jump on let's read the description here for issue two boon raku part two strange circumstances continue uh, to surround a traveling puppet show as usagi becomes embroiled in one of his most eerie adventures yet will the aid of a supernatural ally be enough for usagi to prevent more death stan saki's long-running epic continues its first thrilling storyline at idw publishing exciting samurai action now in color so yeah i believe i guess it was always black and white before but now it's in color i'm not really sure uh i, I don't know what the difference uh, is uh if people like that or don't like it obviously i know what the difference is black and white versus color but uh i i haven't been enjoying uh the color for uh the one issue so last issue, um, Usagi was watching a uh, puppet show, very cool puppet show, I really liked that, and then one of the puppets came to life there at the very end, I believe it's the one that's uh, featured on this cover, or at least this art here, we see her come to life at the very end, and then there's another character whose name escapes me, I'm sorry guys, um, I should have looked that up before I started filming, uh, but he was uh, there, he was sent there by some sort of kind of ethereal spirit or god there in the Usagi Ojimbo universe to hook up with Usagi and deal with this. I really enjoyed issue one. I don't know how it kind of falls within the greater scope of Usagi stories, but hey, for someone who's never read it, I really enjoyed it, so I'm excited to see what issue two brings. All right, next up, and lastly, is X-Force issue 10. Sorry, guys, it's getting hot in my office. I'm in Texas. That was like 100 degrees outside. Uh, with Rachel Summers under his control, Strife and his mutant liberation front finally have the power to secure their futures at the cost of everyone else's. Will Cable and his X-Force be able to stop them, or will the time stream be forever altered? Find out in this final showdown. So... Young Cable, who you see there on the cover, came to the present day time, changed some things, and in doing so, changed the time stream, you know, same kind of movie temporal mechanics that you can think of, um, and Strife realized it was happening and tried to put a stop to it. He went to the present day, um, caused a whole bunch of trouble in present day that covered the first story arc in this, I believe it was called Sins of the Past, uh, first four issues great stuff uh but now he's trying to preserve his timeline and all the x-force is in that future so what happens if if the x-force loses i doubt they'll lose but what happens uh, you know are they gonna you know revert back to their old timeline what happens it and you know specifically for cable he had his powers taken away with uh, power dampening collar, so the techno or organic virus has taken over him completely. It is pretty gnarly to see, and I'm glad to finally see that happen. I don't think it's happened before in the comics. Maybe I could be wrong. Not the biggest cable uh, uh, aficionado out there. Let me know in the comments if I'm wrong. Um, you guys always do. So I'm excited to see where this goes. Uh, I do believe this is also, just like Uncanny X-Men, the final issue in the series, giving way to Jonathan Hickman's new era of all things X and X-Men related. So sad to see this young series go. I was really enjoying it, but again, super excited to see what's coming up in Jonathan Hickman's era. So guys, that's everything that's on my poll list this week. Once again, let me know everything that you got on your list down in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, if this is your first time here at the channel, hit that subscribe button for me. It would mean a lot. And until next time, we'll see you at the comic shop.